staked out the banks of the Portage River, lasso in hand, waiting to snare anything that stuck its head above water. He didn't catch any sea lions, but the story hauled in plenty of reporters. In London, storybook gardens opened in a downpour. A shipment of otters failed to arrive for one of the exhibits. The PUC's general manager fell into a waterway, and a plastic seal doll that was supposed to pinch it for slippery capsized in the sea lion pool. But the next day, the gardens opened to the public. This will make Springbank Park more famous than Disneyland. Alan Johnson, Mayor of London. In four days, almost 21,000 people passed through the gates, creating crushes as visitors craned for a look at the remaining sea lion. The press insisted on calling her lonesome. Concerned citizens from across North America had been mailing her fish since Slippery's escape. Earl Nichols, who was the PUC guy most responsible for whether or not um, Storybook Gardens was a success. There was some worry, you know, we've just opened up a park, we've never done this venture before, this is cautious London, and uh, this is a pretty big expenditure for its time, and Earl Nichols' rep was on the line. And as it turned out, he couldn't have done anything more guaranteed to make his, his park a success than have this sea lion make a break for him. But 400 miles away, Slippery's Lake Erie adventure was about to take a dramatic turn. In Sandusky Bay, a motorboat was returning from Cedar Point Amusement Park. As the skipper approached the shore, he spotted something in the water. When I get about two-thirds of the way through the bay, up come this sea lion. So I shut the boat down and watch him a little bit, and pretty soon he starts swimming, same direction I'm going. He'd go under the water, swim away, come back up, so I followed him. He kept swimming and went right up in the Eric Aho's marina, right where I was going. And when he, he got up there to a live car that they kept fish in, he jumped up on that, and there he laid. And I called the police. Sergeant Delbert Seiler answered the phone. Of course, and I knew him. And I told him what was down there, and he starts laughing. And I can hear his laughter echoing right down through the jail. Pretty soon he come back on, and he said, Ken, what's down there? And I said, there's a sea lion down here at Eric's on the live car. And he asked me, he says, uh, you been drinking? And I told him, no, sir. I said, I'm working. Word reached Phil Skeldon. He arrived in Sandusky with a cage, net, and his brand new tranquilizer gun. It was nicotine, and it uh, is very potent. This gun and the whole procedure was new, so we had no uh, idea really of what the dosage should be in, on the drug. Nicotine could kill the animal too, you know, if you give it too much. Skeldon and his crew rented a boat and headed out towards the live car. They cut the motor as they approached. Slippery continued to bask in the dying rays of the sun. When the boat was 10 feet away, Skeldon fired. The sea lion slid off the raft and swam around for a few minutes, then slowed down and lulled in the water, dazed by the drug. Skeldon and a cluster of other boats circled and moved in for the capture. Well, it was a summer, you know, warm night. I remember seeing people over by Eric's boat yard all looking out in the water, wondering what they were looking at. So I went over and I couldn't believe my eyes at first. At the last moment, Slippery had come to, ducked under the water, and surfaced outside the ring of boats. It seemed like it was a game to him. Just like uh, you have a dog at home and chasing him, you know, he'll come running by and see if you can catch him and so on. Well, 
It was about that way with the sea lion. He, he thought it was fun. I think he thought it was a game. I can still close my eyes and see that little nose coming up in the middle of the circle and that little old flipper. <laughs> and then he'd just go and right back down and come outside the circle. And when he was at loose in Lake Erie there being uh, pursued by people, you, they, they, they said it was like hide and seek. He would literally come up, wait for them to approach, duck down, show up somewhere else as if to, you know, Hundreds of cheering spectators gathered on shore. It was reported that Slippery swam past the crowd, acknowledging their support by a wave of his flipper. Skeldon scored another hit, but Slippery didn't even slow down. The zoo director was dumbfounded. A dart that could bring down an 800-pound antelope had no effect on a 100-pound sea lion. He flippered his nose at them. <laughs> I swear he did. He'd just come right up in the middle of the, of the circle, and I'd see that little old flipper go out, and that's the way I told my story. He didn't thumb his nose, he flippered his nose. I was so glad he got away that day. <laughs> With night approaching, Skeldon gave up the chase. Slippery vanished into a patch of reeds by the shoreline. I hope he'll go down toward Cleveland. The zoo there can chase him for a while. I'm disappointed we didn't catch him. I'm finished with the whole deal. I just can't afford to run back and forth. Phil Skelly. Earlier that week, an editorial in the Toledo Blade pondered the possibility of getting Slippery a mate so the couple could create a family of Lake Erie sea lions. I got a phone call oh, quite early in the morning. I, I forget what it was, Toledo.